Larry Farrell, the world's most experienced authority on researching and teaching entrepreneurship from the Farrell Company USA. Welcome to our special edition of Business Africa. On our show today, we have a guest who's flown all the way from the USA, who's very passionate about a topic called entrepreneurship. In fact, it is one of my passionate topics as well. Uh, Mr. Larry Farrell, who's, who's been invited by the Board of Investment to discuss about entrepreneur and how to make our country an entrepreneurship country. Uh, Mr. Farrell has written a numerous number of books, including a book on called Searching for the Entrepreneurship uh, Enterprise, The Entrepreneurial Age, and Getting Entrepreneurial. And this is his latest book, which is just launched. Today. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry? Yes, thank pleasure you. Pleasure to have you. Oh, it's my, uh, my pleasure to be here, Yusuf. I yes. enjoy it. And a, a beautiful setting, too, in Mauritius. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Larry, um, this topic of entrepreneurship is a very important topic. I mean, when we do economics, we learn about land, labor, capital. Yes. And then the new concept came with the concept of entrepreneurship. What is the spirit of entrepreneurship? Who is that entrepreneur? Well, let me, let me start, Yusuf, by, by uh, explaining how I became interested in this topic. And, of course, I have this company now for 31 years. We've been researching and teaching entrepreneurship. That's all we do. But it's a, a bit of an odd topic to build a business around. So uh, back in uh, the uh, 70s and 80s, I was a typical American uh, management consultant type person, okay? And I'd gone to Harvard Business School, very nice school, and most of us who came out of there, we either became investment bankers or consultants, one of the two. So I was a consultant, and I began to realize that most of the consulting assignments I was on, we actually made the problems worse for the companies, and we, we didn't seem to solve. And, and I bec began to wonder, why are all these big companies failing? Why do they grow up 10, 20, 30 years, and then they begin to decline? And I began to research. And I realized that most big companies, they come and they go. In fact, I think it's a, of the 100 biggest American companies 100 years ago, only 16 still in business, so they die. And I became interested in the first 10 or 20 years of a great company's life, thinking if we could understand what Steve Jobs did in the first 10 or 20 years at Apple, or Walt Disney did at that company, or even the founder of IBM, what, what did he actually do in the 1920s? Or William Lever, even back in the 19th century. So I became obsessed <laughs> with the entrepreneurial phase of companies' histories. And that was 1983, I formed a small business to research that. And we did uh, bring together some ideas about it, created a, a training program based on those ideas, and that has become my business. Um, and in and to today's world, what we've learned over 30 years is that, for example, teaching entrepreneurship has three distinct markets or segments around mm -hmm. the world. The first one is the more traditional approach, which would be training an, uh, an individual entrepreneur to start a business right, so and we do a lot of that through universities we, we don't offer seminars on the street but we work through universities teaching and our curriculum teaching so students you, you give them the foundation to be an entrepreneur yeah, that's right the, the individual who wants to start a business all right but that's only about 20 percent of our business that, mm -hmm. that segment the second segment which actually is the biggest segment for us believe it or not is running training programs in giant companies Coca-Cola, IBM, American Express, these big companies. And people are surprised that a big corporation today wants to train its managers in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're, they know they decline and they need to reinstill some innovation, entrepreneurial spirit to keep growing. And so we call it corporate entrepreneurship training. Mm -hmm. It's become quite popular. Right? And it's about 70% mm -hmm. of my company's business around the world. Mm -hmm. The third market that we're interested in, and the reason I'm in Mauritius actually, yep. uh, as the guest of the Board of Investment here, is uh, to help entire economies become more entrepreneurial, working through governments. Mm -hmm. right? So we have these three marketplaces, individual entrepreneurship through universities, big corporations, we do the training for them, and then working through the uh, government agencies to help create a more entrepreneurial economy in their country, in, in their economy. Yeah. 
And when you look at uh, what you just been discussing about the entrepreneur yeah. starting a business, yeah. then they, they grow and then they, there's a decline. Yeah. Is it the very aspect which you just mentioned about entrepreneur doing something and then in between there's no, no support to create what you've mentioned in your book, the, co the corporate entrepreneur. Yeah. And then once you do that, you also need the, the country to, to grow. And maybe tell us why is it so important okay. to create the entrepreneur and then create the entrepreneur mindset yeah. uh, in the company and then create the country okay. uh, as an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Oh, oh, sure. And, and of course, to do this business, we had to identify what is entrepreneurship. Yeah. And it's the, it is the life cycle of the companies that helped us define that. When we look at these large companies, or they, have a, they go through a life cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we think it's basically four phases. They go through a startup phase, a period of high growth, maybe 20 years, 30 years. Then they reach uh, 30, 40 years old. They begin to slowly, slowly decline and they die. Mm -hmm. right? In the first two phases, the startup and the high growth phase of the life of a, of a company, that's where we did our research. What are they doing in those high growth phases? Mm -hmm. the, the first 20 years of Apple Computer or Disney or IBM or so on. Right? And, and we decided, in my business, we decided that that was the way we would also define entrepreneurship. And of course, as, you, as your question implies, once the company goes through those first two phases, so right? business, it is now a giant company a giant company mm -hmm. and the original entrepreneurial team Yosef it's time for them to retire they want yeah. to quit they go and, and in the US they go to Florida here in Mauritius maybe you stay here it's a nice place you know but they retire and what they do every time is they replace themselves with MBA type managers professional mm -hmm. so what you have at 30 years of age for a corporation a giant bureaucracy Mm -hmm. slowing down, decline, yeah. beginning yeah. to decline, run by MBAs. I say this is a recipe for disaster, all right? Because yeah. the entrepreneurial spirit entirely gone. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do with those types of companies is try to reinstill the entrepreneurial spirit in the company. And the companies today, as I mentioned, Coca-Cola, IBM, they they try to do that. Is that one of one one of the mistakes that most family business do? Yeah. Mm. They start. You know, the father is the entrepreneur. The son goes into an MBA, comes back without much experience, run the company. So traditional. Yeah, and you probably know the old Chinese proverb: "Beware of the third generation." Huh? Yeah. <laughs> the first generation creates the business. The second one maybe goes off to get his MBA, mm -hmm. comes back and begins to decline it. And the third generation destroys it. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's, uh, I love the Chinese <laughs> proverb, you know, beware of the third. Yeah. But it happens even in the publicly held company. In our research, we, we believe, now we may not be 100% right, but we believe there are at least four very important characteristics of great entrepreneurs and great entrepreneurial companies. Number one, we call it sense of mission. The, the entrepreneurs that we know about, they all believed that they were doing something important. They were so proud of their pro what they invented. The you baby. Know, <laughs> their baby, yeah. they were passionate mm -hmm. about it. Basically, they love what they do. And we, we call it sense of mission. It turns out, Yusuf, that having a sense of mission about your work is very important. It gives the entrepreneurial company great competitive advantage against a bureaucracy where, the, where mm. nobody cares. Right? The drive as well. The drive. Yeah, so yeah. sense of mission is very important. Mm. The second characteristic actually includes the two most important words for an entrepreneur, customer product. We call it customer product vision. Imagine, I mean the entrepreneur understands this, if I don't have a product that a customer will buy, I don't have a business. So in the early days, everything is focused on having a great product or service and what customers will buy it. So customer product vision is a dominant characteristic mm -hmm. in the early stage of a business. Everyone on the team is thinking about it, in yep. fact, yep. okay? The third characteristic that we believe, I'm sure it will not surprise you, is uh, innovation. Uh, we call it high-speed innovation because in today's world you can't just be innovative. You have to be innovative but quickly implement those innovative ideas. So we call it high-speed innovation. And as the great founder of Sony said, Akio Morita, he said, moving quickly is the entrepreneur's secret weapon against fighting the big competition. Okay? 
The fourth and final mm -hmm. characteristic that we teach, we call it self-inspired behavior. Indeed, entrepreneurs are self-motivated, partly because of the sense of mission. They love what they do, but also because of this, this old-fashioned word, consequences. The entrepreneur learns in the first month of his business. If he doesn't perform well, he doesn't have a product and doesn't have a customer who will buy it, he doesn't make any money. And so after the first month, he opens the cash box of the business and finds no money. He has to go home and tell his spouse, yeah. I'm sorry, the first month we have no income. Mm -hmm. And she says, how will we feed the children? So the entrepreneur learns immediately. This is very serious business. Yeah. I have to perform, I have to have a great product, and I have to have a customer. So these four practices, while they sound rather simple, mm -hmm. these are powerful, powerful entrepreneurial practices that 10, over 10, 20, 30 years get replaced. Replaced by what? Strategic planning, financial control systems, human resource system, I mean, all nice things. I'm not saying we, we don't need these other things, but they become the way we manage the business and routine. the entrepreneurial mm -hmm. practices die. And that's what happens. So the routine, the routine kicks in and the culture exactly, of entrepreneurship. Exactly, Yusuf. The routine kicks in, the management systems kick in, nobody's thinking too much anymore about it. Mm -hmm. As Steve Jobs always said, and I bless his heart here, too bad he died already, mm -hmm. but as he always said, actually managing is the easy part. Inventing the world's next great product is what's hard in business. Uh, that's the real challence that's in challenge. business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I like that quote yeah, yeah. Uh, very much.